In Jesus' name, it's good to be gathered together and to worship our Lord and Savior. And the bell sounds better on a nice cold winter day like this too, doesn't it? Um, although we'll see how long the snow lasts and that. But good to have you all here. If you take a quick look in the bulletin, just want to note a few things. Youth group tonight, um, today is the last day to turn in C Operation Christmas Child boxes. There's a few of them here. Um, and uh, next week, I believe, we're going to uh, do a blessing over the boxes and get them ready to send out. And so thank you to all who have taken part in that and, and uh, helped with those things. And a special thank you to Shirley for taking care of a lot of that. Um, you have your basement back for a little bit. Is that the... Yeah, yeah for a little bit, yeah. <laughs> She'll be buying for next year already, I'm guessing. So that'll be good. But thank you, Shirley, for that and uh, for all that have helped. Um, looking ahead to things, a full slate on Wednesday again here and uh, WMF this coming Thursday. I do want to make note, um, a week from Tuesday is the parish council meeting out at Spruce. And uh, believe it or not, we are within two weeks of Thanksgiving, which is amazing to think about. Um, we will be having an Advent um, series here this year, beginning on December 1st at Rose and then back and forth. Um, there'll be four Advent services um, a number of years ago, we did the Nativity Story movie. I'm gonna, I think that's what I'm going to do again and uh, go through that Nativity Story movie and preach through those parts of the, the Christmas story. And so it would be a neat opportunity. Um, if, you, if you're wondering when we did it, it's back like 2008. So it's quite a ways ago um, that way. So there'll be inserts coming and you can see and take part in those on Wednesday evenings. Uh, the prayer list is on the back of the outline. We've narrowed things down a bit in there. And so if there's something you want um, in the prayer list, please let us know in that way. Um, but a lot of things to be praying for. Any other prayer requests or anything at this point or announcements? I want to let you know too that uh, the daily, our daily bread, the December, January, February one is now available. So you can pick those up if you'd like. Um, also, I want to let you know, um, there was some unique texts being sent out in my name yesterday. Um, evidently, there's some sort of scam people trying to, and this was not my number, and it came to a few people in our congregation, so it's somebody using the churches. I heard that Mo and Messiah had something similar, some different things happening. So just to remind you that if you ever get a text from me and it's asking you to do something, um, call me first and uh, make sure on things. And I will never sign my name Pastor Todd Erickson. It'll be Pastor Todd if I do or Todd type of thing. But uh, it's interesting how those things occur. I have checked the number and called back. It's not my number. and so. But just want to let you know about that. If you did get a text from me, it appears that a few people in the church um, got a text and uh, in my name. So that's kind of the weird how those things happen. But... Uh, Oh, so you got one too, yeah. Yeah, they didn't answer. Interesting, I'm, yeah, just so let you know those things, you just, uh, you know, check them out and uh, don't be afraid to text me and find out whether it's me. Um, uh, it's the world we live in today, and uh, but being aware and being um, smart on those things is key. So, yeah, and so if anybody else got one too, please, um, and please know they try to, they, what they do a lot of times is try to get you to bring a gift card somewhere or do something, and so, or they sound like I'm in trouble. Um, this has happened to our, our Bible college president and things too with email, all of a sudden, all these email they hack an email thing, and mine wasn't hacked because it wasn't my number that it was coming from, but so it's really weird. But uh, be in prayer. There's people that are hurting that way too, that, uh, that uh, um, seek to find ways to treat, cheat people out of things too. So just want to let you know, don't lose faith in people though either. <laughs> there are good people out there who want to help others as well. Let's pray, let's pray. Lord, yeah, we do come to you. We know this is a broken world and we're broken too. And we need you. And uh, we pray. We pray for those that uh, attempt these type of things, but also we pray for one another. And we pray for those that are really in need. 
And we ask you to give us hearts to, and eyes to see those needs when the time comes and to use the, the gifts and the, and the abilities that we have to reach out to people. Lord, we thank you too that uh, we can come to you in prayer. We see the list uh, in our bulletin. We know there's many needs and on each of our hearts and our minds there are people that we're thinking of that uh, we lift before you. Um, people that have needs physically, people that have needs um, uh, monetarily, people that have needs um, in their hearts. And we pray. We pray for those needs. And we know that your desire is that, that all would know you and come to the knowledge of the truth. We pray that that truth would, would show forth and people would go into those paths so they may find out about you and what you can do for them. Thank you, Jesus, for being the one we can worship today. Accept our worship, please, and uh, may we honor you in all that we say or do this morning. Um, I pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our opening song um, here today. And it's a, it's a song that uh, puts us in that right focus right away. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's sing it together. Please be seated. Let's confess our sin today as we turn to, turn to Jesus and put our eyes upon him and what he's done for us. And the, if you need it right in front of you, it's on page 48 there in the hymnal. But join me as we bow our hearts and uh, confess our sin together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you to confess to you that we have grievously sinned and fallen short of your glory. We have not loved you above all things or our neighbor as ourselves. We confess these and other sins to you in order to receive your forgiveness and cleansing. Grant to us your mercy and grace 
and help us to live our lives in the way that honors you the most. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll call upon Amber for her scripture readings today. First reading is from Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The second reading is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you, thank you, Amber, for reading that today, and uh, we're going to finish out Luke 10 here today and hit that last part and talk about Martha and Mary um, here a little bit in the sermon. Let's uh, confess our faith together and we'll proclaim what we believe, and uh, I always mention to people, it's good to have the words right in front of you. I get caught sometimes thinking about certain things as I'm proclaiming it, and I'm glad that the words are there so that I don't end up stumbling, because I'm leading you guys through it, so if I mess up big time, but let's proclaim what we believe, and uh, may it come from our hearts today and not just from our lips. So join me if you, if you would. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's give back to God with our tithes and offerings here this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray as we do so often here, we pray that these gifts that are given today would be used to your glory, and that people may come to know you as their Savior as a result of what these gifts are used for. Use them, Lord, as you see fit. We pray in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen.
Please be seated. We'll call upon the young people at this time to come on up for the children's message. I just realized I didn't wear myself up right this morning. That can get dangerous if you're out doing um, fencing if you don't have the wire right, right? All right, you guys ready? Let's see, we're at what letter today? J. J. We're at the letter J, but let's see if we can get ourselves up to J with things. The A, away in the manger. Away in the manger. Okay. B, okay, What's the whole deal about Baby Shark? Family. Family. Yeah, that's the key. C. Country roads take me home. home. That all I did about home. Did you what? You saw it on the back of a car. Yeah, take me home. They were probably from West Virginia. You never know. Yeah. Um, D. Dare to be a Daniel. And I hope you guys are daring to do that with God's help. E. Everything's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. In fact, that comes out of the book of Ecclesiastes. There's another E. And so the God made everything beautiful. F. Faith is, Faith is the victory. Yeah, way to nail that one. Faith in Jesus Christ, of course. That's the key. G. You're right. Go tell it on the mountain. The shepherds went and told it, didn't they? H. Holy, holy, holy. holy. You guys are great. Holy, holy, holy. Last week was I. Something about Israel. It happened in Israel. It came upon a midnight clear. Did you check out that Christmas song? It's actually in the hymnal. You can take a look too, but it came upon a minute clear. Now, for Jay, we could have a lot of different songs for Jay, couldn't we? What would be some good Jay songs? Jump. I thought about literally doing jump, by the way, but uh, Joy to the World would be a good one. What's probably the most wonderful song ever written, starting with Jay? I was thinking Jesus loves me, but uh, do you know what J song we are going to use today, though? Jingle bells. You guys came with jingles. That's that's what they came up at Spruce too. The kids jingle bells. What's the jingle bell song about? It's about a family riding in a sleigh, right? A one horse open sleigh. What would be better to do than today be out in a one horse open sleigh? We'd be reminded of the snow. We'd be reminded about who made everything. But it's a celebration too, isn't it? To be together with family and a celebration of Christmas, isn't it? So it's a celebrating song. When you sing Jingle Bells, do you sing it like this? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Now you can sing it for us. Sing it for me. Jingle bells. It's a celebrating song, isn't it? Yeah. And so as we do, we want to celebrate who God is. And we can think about that as we go along. So our J song is going to be Jingle Bells, even though we had had a lot of other ones we could have used about Jesus and such, but Jingle Bells, okay? When you guys are done today, you can get a couple pieces of candy again, okay? Actually, today, you can take five pieces of candy but you share three of them, okay? You look out there. Look at they need candy. But yeah, <laughs> you 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 when you see them, you say jingle bells. Hey, you say, and then you give it to them, okay? Can you do that? Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Good job today, you guys. Lord, thank you for the gift it is to be out and about with things and to see your beauty and your creation and to celebrate what you have given to us and most of all to celebrate that you came. Be with these young people as they go forward. Thank you for the way you've made each one of them, but be with them as they go through life. May they know 
And may they celebrate what you have done for them. I pray in your name. Amen. You guys can head on down. Let's sing the song before the message today. <coughs> um, this song is all about breaking open God's word. And uh, one of the things we're going to see with today's message is the importance of spending time in God's word every day and uh, taking time with him. So let's sing together, Break Thou the Bread of Life. If you'd open your Bibles, that bread that is uh, to be opened to us, if you'd open again to Luke chapter 10, let's look at those last verses in this uh, story perhaps that maybe you've heard before about Martha and Mary. As I was reading it this week and spending time with it, I began to look at sermons that people have done, and there's thousands of sermons that have been done about Martha and Mary, and a lot of things have been pulled out about it. And... Uh, the whole idea of what's really important, and that will come out in all of this as we go along. But as I read it more and more, the main character in this instance that Jesus has is Martha. This really is a story about Martha and how she reacts. Now, when we go through all this story, we'll see that Martha's the one who really initiates it. She invites Jesus. We're going to see that as we go along. We're going to see that she must have this gift of pulling people in and preparing things. But you know how it is when somebody's preparing food and doing these different things and being hospitable in this way. If she's not getting any help, she gets a little uptight, doesn't she? I mean, her sister Mary just doesn't help her out. Mary and Martha, by the way, would have known Jesus because 
One of Jesus' best friends was their brother, Lazarus, we read in the other Gospels. And so we don't know whether Jesus was there on this journey, whether he just stopped by, whether he was teaching, whether he was telling them about his journeys, or maybe he was just shooting the breeze with them. I don't know. But whatever it was, we get to see what happens. And we get to see how Martha gets a little bit upset about things. And she just puts it right out there. We also get to see Jesus answer Martha and say, don't sweat the little stuff. What Mary's doing, we don't want to take it away from her. That's good stuff. And we're going to see that show itself out to us. Now, as I read this, I thought about giving it the title because since it was all about Martha, I thought about calling it Martha, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I have used those as my main points today, though. If you want to put them down right away, it's the good, the bad, the ugly, but there's a fourth point, the better, <laughs> that we'll see as well. There was a professor one time who... Um, wanted to teach his class about time management. Maybe you've heard this before. What he did was he took out a gallon glass jar, put it out on the desk, and then he proceeded to take out 12, um, 12 big rocks, good-sized rocks, and place them in the jar till it was filled up with those 12 rocks. And then he asked a simple question to his class. He says, is the jar full? And the whole class was like, yes, it's full. He reached behind the desk and pulled out a bucket of gravel and proceeded to pour that gravel over those rocks. And what would happen to the gravel? It settled itself down and he filled the jar up with the gravel. And then he asked another question. He said the same question, is the jar full? And about half the class is ready to say yes and about the other half the class is like, ooh, what's he trying to teach us here? And so he got, he, he, as they were all sitting there trying to hum and ha, he reached behind and he pulled out a bucket of sand and proceeded to pour the sand in as those little pieces filled up the jar to the top. And then he said, is the jar full? And the class goes, no, because <laughs> they're all afraid of what he's going to do. Think. He pulls out a bucket of water and he pours the water in to the very top. Now he said to the class at this point, he goes, what's, what's the point of this illustration? And one eager beaver student raises his hand and says, the point is no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really hard, you can always fit something more into it. <laughs> now that wasn't the point. The speaker said, no, 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 no. That's not the point. The point is this. If you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get them in at all and that's what jesus is going to say to us here in some ways time spent sitting at my feet and listening to my word is a big rock <laughs> if we aren't careful the busyness and the distractions of our day will take out that essential time we need with our lord <laughs> even good things like serving the lord can wrongly crowd out the necessary things so let's start here. Let's just take a look at this and let's start with the good. In verses 38 through 39, we read there that Jesus is on this journey and he enters this village. It's probably Bethany because that's where they end up living. I don't know if they lived in a different spot at this time, but later on with Lazarus, we see it's Bethany. And a woman by the name of Martha welcomes Jesus into her house. She gives an invitation <laughs> And it tells us about her sister Mary, and we'll get to that in a bit. But Martha here must be one of those people and appears to be one of those people who, who loves to have people over, invites people. In fact, I like to look at things here and see the spiritual gift that Martha has, that spiritual gift of hospitality. We know people who have that spiritual gift of hospitality, <laughs> In fact, in the book of Romans, it, we just, Amber read it here a bit earlier, to share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. 
Right now, do you know people are good with hospitality? They love to have people over. I, I can think of people that do that. Many of you are very good at being very hospitable. But you know what? Even being hospitable, we need to make sure that when we're hospitable, we're having people over and we don't get caught up in the preparations you ever been to somebody's house where they're so caught up in the preparations that they don't hardly talk to you the whole time you're there? People have wonderful gifts, and, and a lot of you are good at cooking, doing the things, and, 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 but to be hospitable is to care about the people when they come in. And I'm guessing that Martha was good at that because she was good at doing the preparation. She had these gifts. But there's times where we get so caught up in things that we, um, we forget to think about the people we're being hospitable to and we're thinking about ourselves. <laughs> and we can get frustrated. And we see that here. It kind of leads to it in the bad. If, if we go to the first part of verse 40, verse there, it says that Martha was distracted by the preparations that had to be made. Hey, are there any distractions that you guys have these days? Are there things that distract us? If we pull out our phone, that's one of them. <laughs> There's a lot of things that distract us from things. And they can be good things. They can be good things that distract us. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can do good things. I can read the right books. I can do all the studying in the world of the scripture, but if I, you, that be, can become a distraction for me to spending time with Jesus. I know I'm jumping ahead of myself here a little bit, but even as pastors, one of the dangers as a pastor is I'm going to spend time studying God's word. I'm going to spend time there, and I get so caught up in that I forget to have my daily time with the Lord. To have a time where I have some devotions, read scripture, some time where I pray. And it can happen to all of us. I was thinking about this with distractions and I was reminded of the story of Yogi Berra and Hank Aaron. I think it was the 1957 World Series. And by the way, if you uh, know who these people are, Hank, Hank Aaron was the the home run leader for many, many years before he was displaced here a few, number of years ago. But Hank Aaron played for the Milwaukee Braves and the Atlanta Braves eventually. Um, great home run hitter. Uh, Yogi Berra was the longtime catcher of the, of the Yankees and had a lot of things that he said. In fact, he was known for his mouth. He used it a lot. Um, when he was on the baseball field, he used it. He would talk constantly as the catcher. He would talk to his people out in the field because he was just encouraging them. If you've ever been to a baseball game, you hear the chatter. That's meant to be there. You're supposed to keep your team going. But the other thing he would do is he would try and distract the batter. The story that goes with this one is Hank Aaron came up to the plate in the 1957 World Series. There were two people on. And, and Yogi Berra says this to Hank Aaron. He says, Henry, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the trademark. Henry, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the trademark. And Hank Aaron did not say a word. He simply got into the batter's box and the second pitch he deposited in the left field seats for a three-run homer. As he went around the bases, he comes around the bases and he comes to home plate. And this is what they say. And by the way, there's a 1959 baseball card. I should have put that up here too that actually portrays what was done when Hank Aaron did this. But um, he said to Yogi Berra, he said, I didn't come up here to read. He said. <laughs> he didn't follow the distractions, did he? Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union back when, tells of a time when there was a wave of petty crime that was uh, happening in their factories. So they put a whole bunch of guards up and new authorities that way around the factories. There was one timber works in Leningrad. The guard there knew the workers really well. And the first evening, out comes Pieter Petrovich, 
with a wheelbarrow, and on the wheelbarrow is this great bulky sack with a suspicious-looking object inside. And so the guard said, Petrovich, what have you got there? And he said, oh, just some sawdust and some shavings. Come on, the guard said, I wasn't born yesterday. Tip it out. And so he tips it out and opens it up, and all that came out was sawdust and shavings. So he was allowed to put it all back again and go home. Well, that same thing happened every night of the week. And the guard is beginning to get frustrated. He says to Petrovich, he says, finally his his curiosity, he goes, Petrovich, I know you. Tell me what you're smuggling out of here and I won't, won't, I'll let you go. (laughs) And Petrovich looked at the guard and said, wheelbarrows, my friend. Now, you got distracted by that story, didn't you? You got caught thinking, what in the world, what in the world? And it was right there in front of us. Martha got distracted by doing all those things, which were good things to do, but there was Jesus right in front of her. (laughs) You know, it, it, it turns from bad too ugly in that sense. It, it, it goes to that point because you look at the second half of verse 40 and it says, she comes to Jesus now and she asks him, she says, Lord, don't you give a rip? Don't you care that my sister has left me? I'm doing all this work and there she sits. You ask her to help me, Jesus. You tell her to help me. Literally in the, in the text, it's a, it's a command. You tell her, Jesus, to help me. Martha's lost focus, hasn't she? Who's she focusing on right now? Herself. She's so caught up in, in, instead of dealing with her pride, and she's blaming Mary. And what starts to come is a bitterness. Now, I'm guessing all of us have hit a point in something like that where we've played that role. We see Jesus and Martha and Mary there. And Mary, Martha knows what her gifts are. Martha knows Mary. And we get so caught up, we think that people should be doing all the things that we can do. They aren't helping us. But you know what? If we know who people are, and I'm not saying we we know everything about people, but if we have a general idea of people, there's a lot of gifts that they have. I I heard this story. It was a story of um, the Archbishop of Canterbury. If you don't know who that is, it's just um, one of the higher ups in the church in England. And so what happened was one time the Archbishop of Canterbury was going on a train in London and uh, he got a little bit behind times and he got a little bit confused and he stepped into the wrong cart or the wrong, the wrong, um, pa- wrong, yeah, wrong car, the passenger car. And uh, the one he stepped into was full of inmates from a mental hospital. So they were all had their uniforms on for that. And the train took off. And as the train started going, um, there came a guy around that was checking on things, the superintendent, because they wanted to make sure they had all the inmates that they were supposed to have. And so he was counting the inmates, one, two, three, four. And he comes to this guy dressed in a suit with a clerical collar on. And he goes, who are you? <laughs> And the archbishop said, I'm the archbishop of Canterbury. Five, six, seven, eight. The archbishop of Canterbury didn't realize who was around him. (laughs) If we don't realize who other people are in the midst of what we're doing and what they can do, Martha knew Mary. And she knew that Mary had different things that she would do and different things that way. 
And we need to recognize that instead of expecting people to be exactly like us or to have those same gifts. <laughs> and see, that leads us to how Jesus responds to all this. <laughs> and we read it there in verses 41 and 42. Martha, Martha. By the way, we all know that if you repeat somebody's name, you want to get their attention. I don't think Jesus is scolding her here as much as he's saying, Martha, Martha. He just wants to get her attention. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will be not be taken away from her. We see the good, the bad, and the ugly, but then Jesus points us to the better, doesn't he? He points Martha there, he points you and me. One thing is needed. <laughs> one thing is needed. Now, does it say there what that one thing is? Jesus doesn't go into what that one thing is. But when we read Scripture, it becomes pretty clear what that one thing is. I, I think of Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough worries of its own, enough trouble of its own. Seek first His kingdom. Seek Jesus. I couldn't know. There's a lot of verses I could use here, but Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And all these, oh no, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. And I picked out one more verse that, because it just is a verse that's a part of our lives. Deuteronomy 31.8 the Lord himself is the one who goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. <laughs> to seek Jesus. To sit at Jesus' feet. <laughs> to take that time each day <laughs> for him. See, the key to all this is do you and I know Jesus do we know him not just know about him but to truly know him and to spend that time with him each day I'm blessed I mean one of the things that becomes a part of our life should be a time of reading God's word praying I'm blessed when I get out of the shower most mornings and whatever if, if Joyce is up I see her reading the Bible I see her doing that. She got that from her parents. She spends that time. And it's not that that makes us a Christian, but it's that which helps us grow. To spend that time with Him daily. Like I told you, as a pastor, it can easily be something put to side because I'm going to study God's Word. I need to have that time with Him. And I'm not asking you to go and pencil in a half hour every morning now. Or try and set your alarm earlier. If you want to, go ahead and try. But start out simply with it. Find a time each day. If Jesus is that important to us. Um, there was a, a young man by the name of Thomas Scott in the 1700s who felt the call to go into the ministry. So he traveled a few miles to a nearby town, the town of Olney, England, to uh, talk to a pastor that was there. The pastor happened to be um, John Newton. John Newton was the man who had written the song Amazing Grace. And he talked to John Newton for a bit and was just asking questions about what this would entail. And the two of them became, they began to write to each other. They didn't have texting back then, so they began to write letters back and forth. And the first letter that John Newton wrote to Thomas Scott was this. He said, the first lesson in the school of Christ is to become a little child sitting simply at his feet that we may be made wise unto salvation. And Newton's words pierced 
Thomas Scott's heart, and he became an evangelical Christian who would walk 14 miles every Sunday to preach to patients in a London hospital. He served in the ministry the rest of his life, wrote a Bible commentary, undoubtedly that first lesson Newton gave him made a strong impression and guided him to that successful ministry, to simply sit at the feet of Jesus. I read a story about a pastor who on Monday evening went to get some groceries at the grocery store and the lady at the grocery, the the checkout lady um, saw him there and he's going through and she goes, uh, have you had a good day? Because <laughs> evidently her day hadn't gone the greatest. And you know what he said? He said, you know what? I have had a good day. But then she asked a very wise question. She said, what made your day so good? This is a Monday. And, and the pastor's thinking to himself, oh, just put it right there in the sweet spot. Give me a chance to give a good testimony right here. And he said, you know, I started my day by reading God's Word and by spending some time with God in prayer. And the Lord has carried me through the day. Now, they had to get moving because there was somebody else there and, uh, and she said, you know, that is a good way to start the day. <laughs> he said, I prayed for her. Pr I've been praying for her and praying for the checkout lady. Anybody who could hear that, the things. But that really is the key, isn't it? So the question I have for you and for myself in, in this way as we look at this story of Martha is are you and I sitting at Jesus' feet each day? <laughs> Are we taking that time? I, I don't want to make it something that you, that you think is a, a work that you do each day, but it becomes that time that you spend getting to know Jesus better and better because He's the one who's paid the price for us. It got me to thinking, you know what? My mind goes back to music very often and songs pop into your head. And there's a song that popped into my head I'm going to try and sing it a cappella because we, we're not supposed to put things on YouTube that have these tapes behind them too much. So I'm going to give it my best shot here. Maybe you've heard this song because it talks about eternity and about heaven. When you think about heaven, what, what comes to your mind, I guess? <laughs> but I want to tie it into what we've looked at today and, and we've looked at Martha and Mary. And first of all, my prayer is that you know Jesus. That you, that you take that time with Him and find out who He is. But more than that, that you spend time with Him each day. Let me give it a shot here. We'll see. My voice isn't the greatest, but we'll give it a, give it a whirl this morning. And I might not sing it fully correctly if you know this song, but we'll give it a shot. If I leave this world of sorrow Sometime before you do Just look for me in heaven And we'll talk the ages through But if at first you fail to see me let me tell you where I'll be. I'll be thanking Christ, my Savior, for saving a wretch like me. But if you should reach that city before my time has come, perhaps you'd like to greet me when my race down here is run. Just wait, for I'll soon be coming across life's ebbing sea. And I'll tell you now, dear loved one, just where to wait for me. Don't look neath the gates of pearl, 
Don't look by the streets of gold. Don't look by the walls of jasper, nor among the many sights untold. For I've been longing and I've been waiting for the precious Holy One to see. There I'll be through the countless ages. Look for me at Jesus' feet. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for this encounter and uh, for bringing it to us. And we know there's one thing that's needed. <laughs> You've said it. Help us to seek you. Thank you for coming to this earth, for paying the price that we couldn't pay. Thank you for offering us that gift of salvation. Help us when the times come and we're using our gifts and we see others not doing things that we think they should be doing. Help us to know that the key is that we're serving you with all the gifts that we have. Help us all to live our lives in that way, to do our work as heartily unto you, no matter what it may be. Help us to live in that living relationship with you. Help us to know you. Lord, you do your work. <laughs> as we'll sing in just a bit, Lord, you're the potter, we're the clay. Have, have your way in our lives. And uh, may we know the joy as <laughs> the kids even singing jingle bells. To know the joy and celebrate what you have done for us. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing song. There was an evangelist years ago, maybe you remember him. Um, and all of a sudden the name just shot out of my head. Um, from the UP, what am I thinking? No, not Pastor France. Um, oh, isn't that crazy? All of a sudden, I'm getting old, older. <laughs> we were just talking about that the other day. When, when we first came, I wasn't even 40 yet. <laughs> this is scary. It'll come to me in the middle of the song, but let's sing this wonderful song. It's just a simple way he'd end every service. Have thine own way, Lord. Uh, a response that we can... Simply pray and sing. So let's sing it together.
Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord himself bless each of you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one true and living God. Amen and amen.